go into like what it takes like what is that preparation for like olympics and the olympic trials like what like specifically like what is what is a typical day um in in like a the preparation for that yes um for as so i was still swimming at u of a after i graduated so i was like a we call a post-grad swimmer so yeah. i still train with the college team but i train as a you know, in the, like a professional swimmer. Mm -hmm. So I was swimming with them and their training schedule was, uh, I'm trying to think, I know like Monday, Tuesday, no, Monday, Wednesday, Friday were twice a day swimming. So you swim in the morning and you swim in the evening. And then Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we were swim. we would do some weightlifting and then we swim after that. So you're talking, you know, I don't know, 30 plus hours every day, every, every week, you know, 30 plus hours. That's basically like almost a full-time job. You just, that's like, that's your job. You know, you just train. Yeah. And I'm guessing kind of on the nutrition side, is it, would you, is it similar to like wrestling? Like, do you keep, are, are you trying to kind of maintain a weight uh, the whole time? Are you maintaining the whole time or are you building muscle or how does, how does that work? Yeah. You try to maintain weight. You don't want to lose too much or or add too much weight so you try to maintain but by but also getting stronger so we do a lot so i was a sprinter so we did a lot more weight training we did weight three times a week where a distance swimmer they may only be weight lifting twice a week because they don't need to be as as strong or you know as powerful swimmer so yeah we would have like a very strict nutrition diet and then we you know i would have like a post workout drink just after I work out so I can recover, get ready for the next day. You know, if I don't have that post recovery work, that drink, I will get more sore and achy. I get more tired. So I'm always trying to keep on top of my game and just, you know, keep pushing myself hard as I can. Yeah. And was it like kind of in that, in that constant pursuit and, and kind of always having all of your attention on that one goal? Did you? ever at any time um suffer from like burnout or were you always mentally on top of it were you always motivated like how were you able to stay motivated uh, because that you so that was basically 2008 to 2016 that was like basically eight years of of, of yeah. constantly training right yeah i did well from actually from 2008 to 2012 i was fully committed after 2012, I had a little a short burnout at that time, right after 2012 Olympic trial. I, I needed, it was, needed a mental and physical break from swimming, just kind of get away from the pool. Uh, and financially, it was very hard financially because as a swimmer, you don't make a lot of money. You know, as, as, you, as your swimming is your job, but you don't make a lot of money as, as a swimming professional, unless you're like a, a gold medalist or you get all these different sponsorship. I'm not at that top where I never got a gold medal or I never been in like any, any kind of sponsorship. But I, I would get, able to get like three suits, which that helped a lot. You know, every suit is between you know three to five hundred dollars a piece of suit. You know, every race I go, every meet I go, I get a brand new suit, which adds up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So 2012 is when I after that I burnt. I got burned out. So I just kind of shoot everything away from swimming. And that's where I decided to do some a different sport. I did CrossFit for a year, about a year. I really enjoyed it. I was really into it. And then I, I even gained a lot of weight. I was like 200 pounds. So I gained like 20 pounds after swimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. And then, so after, after the end of the year of CrossFit, after that different sport, there was a, a deaf organization for, for deaf Olympics asked me if I want to be a coach. Yeah. I was like, you know, what the heck? I'm going to try it out. You know, enjoy the experience, enjoy, you know, meeting new deaf swimmers out there. Which, so I went for it. So I got to meet the team and we were able to go to um, Bulgaria, Sofia in Europe. And I watched them just kind of race, compete with other international swimmers. And at that time, I just like, wow, that brings all those memories I did, you know, the last, you know, 
10, 10 years, you know, it, I really missed that, you know, like I missed that, that feeling, that being in the water again, that racing, seeing them win. And it's like, you know, I'm going to get that last shot for 2016. So I decided after I finished the Olympics with the dub team, I came back to the States. In my Self a couple of weeks, just kind of really process it. Am I gonna do this? I have to. If I do this, I need to like, you know, put everything aside again, focus on swimming again. So I did that. I talked to the U of A coaches, and they welcomed me back again. I was so thrilled. So I trained with them for the next three years till 2016. Okay, and then did you did you do the trials in 2016 again? Yep, I went to Olympic trials in 2016. I left my last shot. 